Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, 10, 15 in the p.m. here, California time, October 30th, 2025, uh, Halloween tomorrow. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.2 earthquake here. Uh, looks like around New Zealand, North Island, New Zealand, picking up on that uh, latest quake on the globe. Going to start off here across the West Coast. Uh, not a whole lot of movement up into the uh, Pacific Northwest for now. Northern California is seeing uh, a little bit of uptick out here, including some earthquake activity in the last hour near Shingletown. That's north here of the Battle Creek Fault. Also some activity there around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Geothermal operations there. Uh, not a whole lot of activity here across the Cascadia subduction zone uh, for now. I was just looking at the uh, trimmer counts out here, and they are going down about 45 trimmer counts here across the uh, oh, southern coast of Oregon. Uh, fairly uh, significant drop compared to what we've seen here in the last month. Earthquake activity uh, not uh, too active up there for now. Uh, here across the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, we've got a couple earthquakes in the two, uh, magnitude 2 range. Nothing major going on here across Southern California for now. The latest quake above 2.5 has it out there in Nevada with a, uh, a 2.8 magnitude earlier this morning. Uh, for Yellowstone National Park, looking at uh, some movement stirring up throughout the day as well. Uh, these magnitudes are roughly about the same as what we've seen here in the last couple days. A little swarming going on here across the Mammoth area of Yellowstone, also down there across Lake Yellowstone or Yellowstone Lake. Uh, got about 70 earthquakes here in the last seven days. Pretty decent uptick here in the last 24 hours. Still shows some microquake activity here around the Mammoth area. Uh, I don't know if they got their map fixed yet, but uh, let's go over and double check that. I'm not counting on it, but let's take a look here. Nope. Still from the uh, 24th. So... Same for uh, the majority of these out here. Let's take a look here at the uh, Yellowstone overview real quick. See if we can even spot anything on there. It's just, it's annoying because the amplitudes are just not all that impressive. Uh, it looks like may, well, that one's amplified here. It's, <laughs> I wonder if they're listening in on the videos. I'm sure they are. The amplitudes look like they're elevated, but... Um, at least on a couple of them but the data you know there's still no data showing up on any of these if there's some earthquake activity here uh, it should have been showing up all right let me go back to the last runtime yeah it looks like they actually adjusted some of the amplitudes there um, but i don't see anything showing up on them maybe uh i, I still think the sensitivity is off here there's something that's not showing properly either way uh, still some smaller microquake activity there across Yellowstone. We'll continue to check back there, see if the USGS gets their uh, um, seismograph stations updated. Another earthquake out in Kansas this afternoon. Wilson, Kansas, 3.1. Uh, nothing new to uh, report across here. Got oil fields booming uh, with earthquakes. That's just typical. And uh, one little lonesome earthquake there in the New Madrid seismic zone from <coughs> excuse me, earlier this morning. There's that five-pointer up in Alaska. A handful of smaller quakes around that region uh, following that event. Nothing big. I don't see any further uptick there across the Alaska region for now. Uh, looking at newer data uh, here in the white rings, it looks like around the Nankai Trough southward here along this subduction zone leading to Japan. There's a little bit of an uptick going on. There were some fours uh, throughout the afternoon. Also, the Philippines area southward into the cluster zone. Pretty active out here. Uh, some newer movement working this way up here across the Java Trench into the Myanmar region and across uh, the Himalayas there. Got uh, some activity stirring up. Nothing big, just a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, what is noticeable, though, is uh, another uptick there across the Turkey area. Quite a bit of swarming stirring up there. Just been, uh, it's been a pretty active couple months there in this region. I still think there's something bigger brewing out there. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, South America, some newer quake activity here across the Prudhoe Trench. South, uh, I don't see anything big going on. Same for the Middle America Trench. Just kind of a 
Yeah, kind of a, a moderate day here of earthquake activity. If we look back here with the largest magnitude here in the last 24 hours, that's going to go to the 5.5 along the Kermadec Trench, Kermadec Islands region. That's a pretty significant deep earthquake there at about 200 miles deep into that subduction zone. That's a, that's a deep one. Is this a new quake or is this an older one? I think that's an older one. Uh, the 4.2 up there. That's the one I'm just talking about, right? No, no, I take that back. The 5.5 is right up here. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a fun, a long day. Uh, but aside from that, as far as earthquake activity goes, just, uh, you know, like I said, kind of a minimal to moderate in terms of uh, the multitude of magnitudes out here. Uh, take a look here at the space weather activity. A little bit of sea flare movement, but that's, you know, <laughs> wow. Uh, Low-grade sea flare activity. We're currently sitting at a B7.8, which is uh, uh, still pretty low. 50% chance there for sea flare, M flare at 5%, X flare at 1%. These are very low numbers, something that you would see in solar minimum. Uh, the speed is way up there, 710 KMS, that's a that's an elevated level. It does look like we're getting some aurora activity here, and I don't think it was called for. Uh, this has to be some of the high-speed solar wind stream from a couple different coronal holes here. Look at 93. This is interesting. It's kind of uh, morphing into something a little bit well, bigger, maybe. This is behind an hour as well. Let me take a look here at the uh, UV image. Yeah, so we still got that massive coronal hole coronal hole here uh, and another one back across the center disk of the sun that we'll take a look at here in the days ahead uh, there's a magnetogram image not a whole lot to look at out here um, as far as any complex sunspots looking back behind the sun we can kind of do that get a little glim a glimpse of what's going on here this is the earth facing side this is the far side of the sun there's a sunspot group there uh, this is behind about two days, so these are closer here to the eastern limb. We'll get a better look at these in the coming days. Uh, that should uh, cause the flaring activity to pick up a little bit. I don't know how much. We'll have to look at that once it comes into the Earth-directed view. But uh, roar activity looks like it's stirring up out there right now. Um, the data here shows us a major increase in high-speed solar wind stream, well above 700. Um, BTBZ component there, a little bit of fluctuation going on, but it looks like we may see some roar activity there tonight. Um, so if you get a chance there, if you're an Aurora fan, might see those stirring up right now across the Canada area, maybe into the uh, northern tier states and up into Alaska for sure. Take a look at the Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Wow, absent, very absent of anything in terms of severe thunderstorms. There's uh, what's left of, uh, well, I think that's still Hurricane Melissa out there in the Atlantic. That's going to get further drawn up north. Um, Pacific Northwest has another rain event coming in here for uh, the weekend. Our rain event in Northern California still looks promising here. In fact, I'm liking it more and more as the angle of the precipitation as it comes up here from the southwest will be very beneficial for the inland areas. It kind of um, dodges that rain shadow that we get here in the Sacramento Valley when the precipitation comes directly from the northwest or even sometimes from the west. But this has kind of a southwestern flow, perfect uh, for rainfall here in the Sacramento Valley. And it looks to be a good one, so we'll have to keep checking back on that. Uh, and then maybe another one behind that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Ooh, some cold air dipping down here, it looks like, as we head towards the middle of November. I'm okay with that as well. Bring on old man winter. I'm ready. I got plenty of socks. <laughs> plenty, of, plenty of thick socks. I, I'm a guy that wears the thick socks anyway. I, I just prefer it. All right. Uh, let's see if there's anything else going on here, folks. Um, seismograph stations out there. Surpri surprisingly, the California ones are offline, but hopefully they come back. Uh, they look pretty quiet for now. Have yourself a good one. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow for the Halloween morning update. And then, of course, we'll get the Halloween evening update as well. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.